Hey everybody, here we have a Dell Optiplex GX260 that I got for free from a local business because um, something is wrong with it. And it's a bit, it's, and this computer here is actually one I've done work on many times. I have done one of those reinstalls, but I've never had to open it up for anything. So this will be my first time ever opening up this computer. So. What I do know about it is it has had some upgrades. If I'm not mistaken, it has two gigs of RAM in it. So it's a matter of figuring out what's wrong with this thing. Let's go ahead and have a look inside. Okay, I got the cover popped open. It's funny, these Optiplexes are real funny about how they open. There's a latch on the bottom and a latch on the top. You press the latches and the whole thing just pulls open. So your drives and everything slide up and your motherboard's here and your power supply is there. Go ahead and pull this up. That's the um, CPU air duct. Now just go ahead and take a moment to guess why this computer is acting up. I already noticed a, um, a visual sign of failure. Just look for it. I'm going to get a closer shot on the motherboard so that way you can see for yourself. Okay, got a good focus. You should be able to see. Just as a hint, look to the left of the CPU heatsink. And you can look over here to the right of the RAM module in between the ATX power connector and the second memory module. Yes, folks, it's bad capacitors. This board is slammed full of them. They're Nichicon HMs. And this is a very bad series. This series is known to fail. And so we got a couple of Rubicons here and there too that are in good shape. It seems like almost all of these 6.3 volt Nichicon HMs are bulging. The 16 volt caps however are okay. And of course the Rubicons are fine. So yeah this motherboard is slammed full of capacitors. And there's a possibility that um, the owner could have heard these capacitors popping open and venting. Because they will make a big noise when they vent. In some cases, sometimes they vent silently, in other cases they vent loudly. Okay, here's the memory. Now the computer and the CPU is located right here. I have 2 gigs of memory, 2 1 gigabyte DDR. 266 sticks, so it's PC2100. I prefer it to be at least, you know, like DDR400, but this is okay. Still 2 gigs of RAM. Be nice for an older machine. And we have a um, 2.4 gigahertz Pentium 4 CPU. This is a Northwood. And it's funny to note, look how clean that CPU is. I didn't actually clean that myself. Look at the heatsink. The base is a heatsink. Now I just made a video not too long ago about um, a Dell laptop. It was an unusual Dell, it had a different kind of cooler. And I also noted how it had this tinfoil style of thermal transfer on the heatsink, more or less Reynolds wrap. Look at this. You can this, you can actually see a print of the um, it's like it it's like the specs of the CPU actually printed onto the tinfoil, onto the aluminum foil. pretty funny actually and it's real sad that a company would seriously think that um, you could use aluminum foil as a conductor of heat I mean aluminum is not the best <laughs> for this kind of use I mean when you have stuff like when you have thermal paste out there that does a whole lot better and you can have it pre-applied to your heatsink. Why waste your time with this old stuff? I mean, it's look, it's it's like Reynolds wrap. They put some black stuff on there too. So it's got like black stuff on this side, and I guess that's supposed to transfer the heat. Cause it's not a very good um, design overall, in my opinion, when it comes to um, thermal transfer material. Anyways, let's go and look at the power supply. The power supply is a Newton 
manufactured 250 watt unit. Okay, there's a zoom in shot of the spec label. The pause view specs. Anyway, let's just go and pull this thing out so you can get a better look at it. Okay, here's the power supply I pulled out of the computer, and here's a better look at that spec label. So, anyways, um, pause view specs. Okay, <clears throat> it appears this power supply was made in 2003, and it's got a whole lot of weight to it for a 250 watt power supply. And that's because this power supply has a passive power factor correction coil inside of it. It's a humongous coil and it bolts on right there. It gives this power supply a massive amount of weight. See, most power supplies back in these days didn't have any sort of PFC built into the unit. Most of computer power supplies nowadays, at least the good quality ones you can buy for a custom built machine, have active power factor correction built in. And, um, of course, back in these days, you didn't really find much of that. It was either no PFC or passive PFC that uses a coil. And this power supply has a lot of dust in the fan. And a lot of dust in the air intake. So I'll be cleaning this out with the air compressor, and then I'll be opening this up in another video to show you the insides of it. I'm curious to know how this thing has held up over the years. The computer... Of course, like I said, the motherboard with the back capacitors, um, it actually held on for a pretty long time. I'm not sure exactly when these capacitors failed, but um, that's probably what the owner of this machine heard, because they, he said it, he heard a bunch of audible noises and then the thing just shut off. So it's po possibly some of these capacitors failed and short-circuited to ground, so causing this computer to just shut off. It's likely what probably happened. So anyways, the hard drive is a basic old Western Digital WD-400 ID hard drive. And we have a CD burner. This basic run of the mill machine. It was really like a business oriented computer. Surprisingly, it had Windows XP Home installed and not professional. The only real... <laughs> The only thing this motherboard really has to say about itself is it had gigabit LAN, which is a really cool feature back in that day. Most computers back then only had 10100 LAN. So that's pretty neat. So anyways, the um, reason why I didn't even bother to fire this thing was because I knew something was wrong with it. And obviously with those bad capacitors, it probably, wasn't going to, it probably wasn't going to do much of anything. Normally, if the motherboard was newer, I would actually recap the motherboard, but considering this computer is eight years old, it's had a pretty rough life in a um, truck shop. I think it's I think it's served a pretty good purpose. So, anyways, I'm about to look inside a um, dead Dell Octoplex GX260. Anyways, send a question or comments. Feel free to ask.